What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video will be part three of five of this farmhouse style dining table build. In this video, I'll show you how I made the tabletop using only three boards, and I'll walk you through all the steps and details of how I did this. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the rest of the upcoming videos for this table. And now that you'll be here for the other videos, let's get into how we made this tabletop. So getting started with this tabletop, I made the top only from three boards. These are all two by 12 by 12s. They're southern yellow pine. So I took three of these and I cross cut them directly down the middle, giving me six boards altogether. So five of these boards would be used for the top section, whereas the last piece would actually be cut in half and used for the breadboard ends. After the boards were cross cut to length, I ran them through the planer a couple times and surface plane each side of these. Actually plane them several more times than what's shown here, but since planing isn't the most exciting thing to watch, we will skip all the extra passes that I made with the planer. After the surfaces were flat, I used my track saw to cut a true straight edge on one side. I don't have a joiner or a table saw that I'm confident I can get a good result on, so this is my solution until I get a joiner eventually. Well, you definitely don't need a track saw if you are interested in the track saw or any of the other tools in this video. You can check out the links in the description. One thing about this track saw is that you really do get a perfect edge every single time. So after I had one straight edge of each piece of the table top, I then ripped the other edge off on the table saw. Now I could have done this on the track saw to have an absolutely perfect edge, but I wanted all the boards to be exactly the same size, so I decided to use the table saw. I actually ended up with a really good edge on all the boards and they glued together almost perfectly. After I had all the top pieces cut, I put bar clamps out across my workbench and then I put each tabletop piece on top of them. If you can, try to alternate the cupping of the boards, but mainly focus on lining the boards up to where you'll get the best glue line joint. So I put glue on each joint face and then I brushed it in with a glue paintbrush. You don't need a ton of glue. The most important thing here to focus on is getting good coverage of the glue across the entire surface. After the boards were laid down, I snugged up the bar clamps. You don't want them to be tight just yet, just snug enough to hold everything in place. One thing I do that really helps line everything up is to use smaller clamps on the edge to clamp across each glue joint. This will help line the boards up together and keep the ends of the tabletops flat. So next is the step that I've found to be most helpful when trying to get a tabletop to be flat, is to put a support beam across the tabletop and then clamp it down to something. In this case, I'm clamping it directly down to my workbench. And basically, I put as much pressure as possible on these clamps. This will help to keep all the boards completely flat and pull them down in an equal spacing from the workbench. Once the support beams are tightened down, I then tighten the bar clamps on the bottom and I added some pipe clamps across the top to really keep everything together. If you have any scrap boards, you can put them in between the clamp and the table edge to keep the clamps from digging into the side of the table. So the old saying, you can never have too many clamps, definitely holds true. As you can see, I used pretty much every clamp in my shop. I left these on for about 24 hours and then I took them off the next day. Next, I hand planed any of the uneven surfaces. I don't get too worried if there's a small gap or a small ledge on the tabletop. You can call me crazy, but using the hand plane is one tool that I actually enjoy using. It's almost therapeutic to watch the chips shave off the top of the table. Either that or I just have no idea how to glue a flat, even surface, so that's at least what I tell myself to make myself feel better. Once I've hand planed any of the major ledges off of the tabletop, I briefly sand the top to smooth out any of the rougher surfaces, which will help me with flush cutting and with adding the breadboards onto the tabletop. So to make sure the surfaces had a flat edge for the breadboards, I brought the track saw back and then flush cut the ends. 
I actually didn't plunge deep enough here on the first cut, so I went back and had to cut it again. But no big deal, it worked out and there was a perfectly straight edge. If you didn't notice, my broken square is still alive and doing well. So if you haven't given this video a thumbs up already, be sure to do that on behalf of my square making it through another video. Earlier I mentioned when I cut the original boards in half, I had six but only used five. So here's the last board. I ripped it right down the middle using the track saw to give me a perfect edge. And then each one of these boards would become the breadboard end. For the breadboard ends, I first cut a dovetail groove using the router on each end of the table. Then I cut a dovetail tongue on each end of the breadboard by flipping the table over on a dovetail bit and leaving a dovetail tongue that would fit into the groove. I have a full video on this that I'll post at the end of the video that shows you how to do these dovetail breadboard ends in more detail. So basically the dovetail tongue will fit in the dovetail groove and then you can tap it in place with a hammer. It'll sometimes help to put a long clamp across and clamp it across. I find it's a little bit easier to just tap into place until it gets there. So I once again use the track saw to cut the breadboard in flush. And the main reason that I do the breadboards this way is to allow for wood movement over time as the middle of the table expands and contracts. That said, you actually do want to keep the breadboard in place. So I'll pin the breadboard in place using a dowel. This is the bottom of the tabletop, so this will never be seen. But all that you really do is to glue a dowel in place, which would keep the breadboard from sliding off. Now this will never happen in a real scenario, but as the table expands and contracts, there could be more movement on one side. So pinning the breadboard in place will keep the spacing equal on the sides. If you like how this look, you could always do it on the top side instead, and then you could exaggerate and tell everyone that that pin is what holds the entire table together. So now we're back on the actual top surface of the tabletop, and I wanted to try something that I haven't done before. So a lot of times on pine tabletops or pine boards, there will be knots that don't look all that great when it's finally finished. So I filled them in with Starbond. Now this was a pretty bad demo because I was using the thin Starbond instead of the thick and I was holding the applicator way too close which caused it to go all over the table. But when I switched to the thicker glue, this held up a lot better and this actually turned out really, really well. I was surprised by how well this worked at the end. And I'll probably do a separate video on this once I have some more experience with the product. After all the knots were filled in, I took a roundover bit on the router and I detailed each edge of the top. This is optional of course, but this detail will really set the table off and make it look great. And the last step of this table was to sand everything down nice and smooth. I hate sanding just as much as the next person, but sanding is so crucial to getting a good and fine finish on the top. So I sanded everything down to 220. Be sure to focus on the glue seams as well as the outer trim of the table because anything that you miss will ultimately show up at the end after it's stained and finished. So here's some pictures and a final look at how this top turned out with the dovetail breadboards. I think this turned out awesome and I really enjoyed this build. If you stick around for next week's video, you'll see me finish this top with espresso stain and a gloss polyurethane. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. Thanks for watching and as always, stay tuned for more.